Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we just went through different types of proofs using the trigonometric identities. As you can see here on the screen, I will listed out all the twelve, um, all of the trigonometric ratios that are possible. Now, the questions that we'll be looking into, <clears throat> they'll be a little bit different. In what way is that? It may be possible that we are trying to prove the left hand towards the right hand. And it may occur that we are unable to get it. So what we do in that scenario, we solve the left hand side, bring it to a simpler form. You solve the right hand side, bring it to a simpler form. And we check whether these two left hand and right hand, the simple form that we have reached, are they equal or not? If they are equal, then automatic the proof is proved. Clear? And there'll be uh, more of complex questions. When I say complex, means they'll be repetitive or multiple usage of different trigonometric ideas in the same question. So let's look into the further questions in this video. The first one, 1 plus sec a upon sec a is equals to sine square a upon 1 minus cos square a. Here, I'm going to solve both LHS and RHS side by side. And now let's see whether they whether it is going to be equal or not. Why I'm going to solve both of them like side by side? Because when I solve this left hand side, I'm not I'm going to get stuck at one point. Okay, so that's why we are going to solve both of them separately. We'll simplify them, reach to a point where they will not be further simplified, and then we'll check them. If we get the same answer, then we are proved it. So let's start with the LHS. Right, so the LHS is 1 plus sec a upon sec a. What is the uh, trigonometric conversion of sec a? Means whose which trigonometric ratios reciprocal is sec a? Yes, it's cos a, right? So I'm going to substitute that. So 1 plus sec a is 1 upon cos a, the whole divided by 1 upon cos a, right? Now we need to take the numerator. LCM, which is going to be a cos A. Denominator is a cos A, right? So the numerator will also be a cos A. Okay. Sorry, denominator is 1 upon cos A. I made a mistake. So keep the 1 upon cos A of the denominator as such. Numerator, let's take the LCM. So it's going to be a cos A plus 1 divided by cos A, right? Now, because the numerator fraction and the denominator fraction, both are having the same denominator, the cos a and the cos a will get cancelled off. Okay. So, we end up having cos a plus 1. Right. What did I do? I have changed the second to 1 upon cos a and 1 upon cos a. I have taken the LCM in the numerator, which turns out to be cos a plus 1 divided by cos a. And in the denominator, I have 1 upon cos a. Because the cos a is the denominator but the, for both the fractions of the top and the bottom, therefore, they get cancelled off. So, answer is cos a plus 1. We cannot move further from this. It's not possible. Right. So, therefore, we are going to solve the RHS. So we have sine square a upon 1 minus cos a. Which identity will work out here for sine square a? 1 minus cos square a. Okay. Divide by 1 minus cos a. So if you look into this uh, algebraic identity that is a square minus b square can be applied here. a minus b into a plus b. So here a is 1 and b is cos a. So a minus b. Right. And a plus b divide by 1 minus cos a the denominator is going to get cancelled off and we get 1 plus cos a so have we simplified the rhs and lhs both of them to yes 1 plus cos a so hence it is proved otherwise moving from left to right or right to left is very difficult we get stuck at this simple form so we say it is proved right Next, cos a upon 1 plus sin a, 1 plus sin a upon cos a is equal to sec a. Now, right hand side is a very simple one single term. Even if I want to simplify, I'll end up having 2 upon cos a. We can't move further from there, right? So, what we have to do? We have to solve from the left hand side, okay? Now, in the left also, we don't have a sec or a cot or a tan. So, that means the only possibility of doing or solving the left hand side is finding the LCM. 
So which are the two denominators that I have here? It is 1 plus sin A and cos A, right? So what are we going to do? We are going to look at the denominator, 1 plus sin A and cos A, right? So they are the, what? Denominators together make the LCM. So 1 plus sin A into cos A is the LCM. So let's do that. So 1 plus sin A into cos A, that's a denominators as a combine. So now I'm going to multiply this cos A with the numerator cos A and 1 plus sin A with 1 plus sin A, right, to make it equal. So this will become cos square A plus 1 plus sin A multiplied by 1 plus sin A means it's a whole square, right. So we just have cross multiplied the it's not cross multiply, we actually multiplied cos A cos A so that the denominator becomes 1 plus sin A into cos A. Same way we are multiply 1 plus sin A up in the numerator and denominator so that here becomes 1 plus sin A into cos A. Okay, now I'm going to open this 1 plus sin A the whole square as A plus B the whole square. Okay, so let's do it. Cos square A plus 1 plus 2 sin A plus cos sin square A. The whole divide by 1 plus sin A multiplied by cos A. Now, I have a cos square A plus sin square A in the numerator. Do I have it? Yes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them one after the other next to each other. Okay, so that I can apply the identity. So, I'm going to say cos square A plus sin square A. So, it's just a rearrangement of the terms in the numerator plus 1 plus 2 sin A. And denominator is 1 plus sin A into cos A. Now I'm going to put the identity. Means cos square A plus sin square A is 1. So 1 plus 1, right? Plus 2 sin A. So I'm going to write that on the right hand side. So we will end up having 1 plus 1 plus 2 sin A. The whole divide by 1 plus sin A into cos A. Right? 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 2 sin A upon 1 plus sin A plus cos A. Sorry, into cos A. So can we take the 2 as a common factor in the numerator? Yes. So this will be 2 bracket 1 plus sin A divide by 1 plus sin A <coughs> into cos A. Now, if I can simplify it further, the 1 plus sin A and 1 plus sin A will cancel off and I'll end up having 2 upon cos A, which is 2 sec A. And that is our RHS. Correct? It's proved. Clear? Okay. Next. Now, here, there's no other way but to write tan as sin upon cos in both the places. That is on the left hand side. Now, while solving this particular question, it's a very important and a higher order thinking question. There are three key stages where you have to be very careful what you are applying it. So that is the turning point. The first turning point is changing the tan theta and cot theta into sine and cos. Okay, so let's start with it. So tan is one sine theta upon cos theta and cot is cos theta upon sin theta. So let's write it down. So it will be sin theta upon cos theta divide by 1 minus cos theta upon sin theta, right? The next one is cos theta upon sin theta divide by 1 minus sin theta upon cos theta. Now, even before we do anything to the numerator, we have to work on with the denominator because denominator there is has to be an LCM. So, in the left hand part, the first part, the LCM is sin theta for the new denominator and in the right part, the denominator has cos theta as the LCM. So, I am just going to work on the denominator, the numerator, I am keeping it as such, I am not touching it for the moment, okay, for the next two steps. So, this is as such the numerator. Now if I take the denominator, the LCM is sin theta. So take the sin theta as the denominator and it will become 1 minus, sorry, sin theta minus cos theta. Right? Similarly, in the next one. <coughs> I'm not touching the numerator. The denominator will be cos theta minus sin theta 
divide by cos theta. Now, when I have to simplify, what happens? This denominator will go and get multiplied with the numerator and this will get multiplied in the denominator. Again, this will go and get multiplied here and this will go and get multiplied here. Right? Let's do that. So, when the sine theta goes and multiplies with the denominator sine theta and the numerator sine theta will get multiplied, it becomes a sine square theta. The whole divide by sine theta minus cos theta multiplied with cos theta. So, I'm keeping the cos theta outside. Right? Similarly, I'm going to take the cos and cos multiply. So, it's cos square theta divided by sine theta bracket cos theta minus sine theta. Now, there is something which I want to want you to focus on. That is this one. Sine theta minus cos theta, cos theta minus sine theta. Both are having the same thing, but there is a change in the subtraction sign. Right? It's more like this. A minus B and B minus A. If I have to take a minus out, it's actually B is negative and A is positive. If you have to compare from here, right? So, if you take a minus out, it becomes a, a minus B. Just check, right? Okay. So, that is what we are going to do. We are going to take the minus out and bring it here in the center. So, the sin theta minus cos theta, I am not touching. But the cos theta minus sin theta will change into minus of sin theta minus cos theta. So, now I am taking the sin theta negative sign outside sin theta will remain as such the bracket will become sin theta minus cos theta right i'll write the reason on the right okay now this minus will get multiplied here so the plus and the minus will multiply and get a minus sign everything else will remain the same so this was the second crucial step what did i do i have sin theta minus cos theta as one of the denominator and the second denominator was cos theta minus sin theta there is only a change in the negative sign so i've just taken this negative as a common factor and I've pulled it out, okay, and that makes the question a little bit changed by giving a sine square theta upon cos square cos theta, sine theta minus cos theta, minus of cos square theta upon sine theta into sine theta minus cos theta. Now, one part of the denominator is same. What is it? Sine theta minus cos theta and sine theta minus cos theta. So, what is extra here? Here is sine theta, sorry, cos theta and sine theta. That has to be multiplied to make it an equal denominator. So now denominators will be cos theta into sine theta into sine theta minus sine cos theta. So this cos theta will get multiplied here and the sine, sine theta will multiply here. So that will give me sine cube theta and cos cube theta. Okay, so let's write it off. Now the third crucial step now is applying the identity a cube minus b cube, which is a minus b into a square, yes, plus b a b plus b square. So we are going to write that identity for the numerator, right? So here a is sine and b is cos. So a minus b, so sine theta minus cos theta, sine square theta plus sine theta cos theta plus cos square theta, right? The whole divide by sine theta cos theta into sine theta minus cos theta. So one of the major denominator that is sine theta minus cos theta and sine theta minus cos theta gets cancelled off. So we end up having sine square theta cos square theta. We are going to add them up together, okay? So I have rearranged it, add them up. Now sine square theta plus cos square theta will be a 1 plus sine theta cos theta upon sin theta into cos theta. Please do not cancel these out because 1 plus sin theta cos theta is single term. You cannot separate them. The only way to separate is giving individual denominator. So, write it like this and separate the numerators giving common denominator as sin theta cos theta. Once you separate that plus sign, then you can cancel off and it becomes 1 upon sin theta plus cos theta is sec theta cosec theta plus 1.